Statistically, either you or the person sitting next to you will have an MTHFR gene abnormality. Now, in this video, will explain what MTHFR is, how an abnormality in the gene can affect your health, and what you can do on a practical level to stay or become healthy if you are affected by this issue. Now, I had a lot of questions about MTHFR or methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase because I mentioned it in my previous video about glothione. So by conservative estimate, 50% of the population will have a problem with the MTHFR gene, increasing their risk of serious diseases. MTHFR is an enzyme that is needed for methylation. Now, methylation means adding a methyl group to a molecule. Now, why is that important? Well, many molecules, including some vitamins that we get from supplements, are inactive until a methyl group is added to them. This methylation process is especially important to convert homocysteine to methionine and folate to methylfolate, as two examples. Now, 50% of the population, again, has one damaged copy of the MTHFR gene, and these percentages vary from source to source. I'm giving you some, you know, general uh, estimate here, right? And this will result in a 30% decrease of methylation. So you're 30% uh, less able to methylate in this state, right? And roughly 10% of the population has two damaged copies of the MTHFR gene. Remember, genes always come in uh, two copies. There are two alleles, one from the mom, one from the dad. And, you know, if one of them is damaged again, then there's a 30% reduction. If both of them uh, are damaged, so it will be called a homozygous state, then you will have a 70% decrease of methylation, which is, then of course, quite a bit. So as, meth as methylation is, as I mentioned before, important to turn homocysteine to methionine, damage in one or both of these alleles will cause an increase in homocysteine levels. Now, this is a problem for the body because homocysteine that is chronically elevated from its normal levels around 6 micromoles per liter to more than 50 micromoles per liter may damage the lining of arteries and cause blood clots and high levels of inflammation. So homocysteine is a molecule that we need. You know, there's a cycle where homocysteine is converted to methionine and then it's recycled again to homocysteine. And that's fine. It's not like we don't need it at all, but we don't need high amounts of it. So in small amounts, it's useful. We definitely need it. But if we can't methylate, then homocysteine will build up. And if it builds up to a very high amount, it actually really damages our arteries. And that's actually very dangerous. It can do other things too. Inflammatory states increase and so on. So in general... MTHFR gene abnormalities are linked to an increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, stroke, infertility, weight gain, mood disorders, and more. And um, this decreased methylation issue may be particularly important for pregnant women. Now, during pregnancy, functioning folate, which is methylfolate, is needed for the healthy development of the baby's nervous system, right? And that is why you will find folate at relatively high levels in most prenatal vitamins. The issue is that, you know, more often than not, this is in the form of folate and not methylfolate. So when they produce these vitamins, it's not in its active form, but it's in just simple folate form. Now, if you don't have any abnormalities with the MTHFR gene, then you can methylate that fine and you get sufficient folate, right? Folate, again, is super important for the development of the nervous system of the baby. And if you cannot uh, uh, sufficiently methylate because either one or two of these um, alleles are damaged, right? And again, large percentage of the populations have this, then you may not have enough methylfolate for a healthy development of the nervous system of the baby, right? So if you're pregnant, this might be actually a very good conversation to have with your OBGYN to see, you know, what prenatal vitamin they recommend and also if you should get tested for this abnormality because they can do this with a blood test. Um, many OBGYNs don't do that routinely, but you can ask about it. And, you know, there's certainly something that they can do. Um, I think this is important uh, to test for in uh, pregnancy. Now, for the rest of the population, I don't think it is as important, you know, um, and I'm going to talk about at the end of the video what measures we can take to optimize this. This will go for uh, pregnant women again. Of course, always, always, always check with your primary care doctor or your OBGYN when you're pregnant before you take any type of vitamin or anything at all because that's actually very important, right? So a genetic test can determine if you have an MTHFR gene abnormality in one or both alleles. In other words, if you are heterozygous or homozygous for this trait, right? Now, you may also have two MTHFR alleles that are perfectly intact, right? And therefore, it's sort of debatable if the test is always necessary. As I mentioned before, 
Um, if you're pregnant, I think this is very much worth doing um, to get more clarity of your needs, and especially in terms of methylfolate during pregnancy. Um, but for the general population, I don't think it's always necessary to test. What I usually recommend for people to do is to test for your uh, uh, homocysteine levels. And that's actually very important. You can do it on a simple blood test as well. Um, and most primary care doctors are much more likely to order that test than the, than the genetic testing, right? So because even if you are in the extreme uh, rare case where both copies of the MTHFR gene uh, are affected, your methylation is not zero. And I think this is the common misconception. It's not like you don't methylate at all. It's just that, you know, it is reduced but you're still methylating some molecules to the active form, right? So it's never zero in other words. And many supplement companies have actually caught onto this issue and are now offering, or not offering, or been offering for a while, vitamin B9, folate, and vitamin B12, cobalamin, in their active state, methylfolate and methylcobalamin. And I think this is actually a very good idea. So instead of, you know, having to go through this first methylation step in your body to activate these vitamins, these are already in the active form, as you would find them usually in um, natural foods, right? Green leafy vegetables, for example, will have a high amount of methylfolate. Since most of us don't consume, you know, a sufficient amount of, you know, organic whole foods, um, and we are somewhat dependent on vitamins, it might be a good idea for us in general, whether we have this abnormality or not, to get our vitamins, especially vitamin B9 and B12 in the form of methylfolate, and methylcobalamin, right? Now, since you may be checking your vitamin bottle after this video, as an unrelated topic, I would also check if your vitamin B6 is present as pyridoxine, which is the synthetic form of vitamin B6, or pyridoxal 5-phosphate, or P5P, which is the active form of vitamin B6. Now, uh, for, di for different reasons, some people cannot convert the inactive form of vitamin B6 to the active form easily. And then high doses of the inactive form, which is pyridoxine, which is the synthetic form that they make and put in most vitamin supplements, can build up and result in toxicity. Now, as a word of caution, I would not recommend to take extremely high amounts of these three vitamins, even in their active state either. Overuse of any vitamin may cause problems, right? So one product that I like, and I'm gonna get now to the point of, well, what can we do about it? So we know there might be issues, and I think they can be solved. Again, if you're pregnant, I would definitely recommend the blood test. Whether or not you do the blood test uh, in different states, that's up to you. I haven't done it personally. I have, though, optimized the vitamins I'm taking. And one uh, supplement that I like a lot is from Thorn, and it's called Basic Nutrients 2 Per Day. And I'm going to go over the label here why I like this particular supplement. Now, I'm not affiliate with this company, but what I like about their formula here is that you know, if you cannot easily activate vitamin B6 or vitamin B9 or B12, this really bypasses that. So I think this is an excellent product, especially if you have a genetic abnormality. I wanna point out a couple of things here. So number one, I talked about just briefly about the vitamin B6, which you see right here, that is present in the pyridoxal 5-phosphate form. And um, that's fantastic. You cannot easily overdose on that one. Now on pyridoxine, the synthetic form you could, but this one's actually fine at uh, 20 milligrams. Now remember, this is for two capsules. You might even be getting away with one capsule a day, in my opinion, right? And then right under that, now we see folate, which is given uh, 400 micrograms as l 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate, right? Which is the activated form of folate, which is the methylfolate. And that is actually uh, fantastic. And so this is what you're looking for. So this will be in the active form and will be easily absorbed even if you have an issue, uh, a genetic issue where you cannot methylate very well, right? And then right under that, we have vitamin B12 as methylcobalamin, again, in the active form, also the very decent dose at 600 micrograms, right? So in my opinion, again, I think taking even one capsule a day should be sufficient. I think to have you overkill, but this is a very good supplement. It also has zinc, which is actually very important. If you take um, some other supplements, zinc at 15 milligrams, which is not too high, that is actually on the on the lower dose there. Um, it has copper as well, which is important as well. So all these things, when you look at it, um, even boron at two milligrams, um, just be mindful of that. If you take an extra boron supplement, your total daily boron should not exceed 10 milligrams. And even then I would recommend a one week break every um, three to four weeks or so. There are of course, many other companies offering um, high quality um, vitamins 
like this one here. And, you know, I would just read the label and make sure you look for really these three vitamins on there, that they are in their active states. So again, it's vitamin B6, vitamin B9, and vitamin B12. And if they're in the active state, then you should be good. So uh, please subscribe and leave a comment or, or question. And uh, I would also be very interested to see what multivitamin you're using. If you found another one that has these vitamins in the active state, and also if you switched to them recently, if you've noticed a change, you know, now that you went from the synthetic form, which many of us will have a hard time uh, to methylate and activate to the active form, if this affected you in any way.